A fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. During the years of unrest that followed the Civil War, a powerful secret organization called the Legion of the Black Arrow sprang up in the western United States. Its members were to be found everywhere, defying the law or using the law for their own purposes, working toward the ultimate goal of revolt and the foundation of a despotic empire. It was the masked rider of the plains who led the fight against this band of outlaws and traitors. And for once, his great strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness were taxed to the utmost in the cause of democracy. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Run the trail of the Black Arrow. Hail, Silver! Hail! When the Lone Ranger and Tonto learned that the mysterious girl who had given them so much information had ridden north in the direction of Tamarack, they hit the trail at once. Tamarack, pretty far from here. Yes, Tonto, it's in the foothills. What we do there? All we know is what the girl said. The town's in danger. Oh, big gold mine there. It may be Indians, may be outlaws. It may be the Black Arrow. Ah, oh, that bad. Whatever it is, we've got to hurry. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scott. Faster, boy, faster. <laughs> As the Lone Ranger and Tonto were racing along the trail, a well-dressed stranger walked into the cafe at Tamarack. It was early afternoon and there were only a few customers. The bartender was sitting at the end of the bar reading a month-old newspaper. He raised his head, looked at the stranger, and then went on with his reading. Well, I don't like to bother you, but uh, how about a drink? Nope. You mean you won't serve me? That's right. Why? There's no place for your kind in Tamarack, mister. You better get out of here while the getting's good. Before Tom Conlon sees you. Tom Conlon, huh? Isn't he the one who owns the Rainbow Mine? That's him. <laughs> Is he the sheriff, too? Nope, just the owner of the Rainbow. That's enough around here. What he says goes. Well, I didn't realize we'd ever met. What's he say about me? No professional gamblers in Tamarack. <laughs> so that's it. <laughs> and why do you think I'm a professional gambler? You sure got all the earmarks. <laughs> well, don't let these clothes fool you. I'm an engineer, a mining engineer. I'm here to ask Tom Conlon for a job. Yeah? Yeah. Now, how about a drink? Coming right up. <laughs> I'd uh, like you to tell me a little more about time, if you don't mind. What do you want to know? Well, uh, how long has he been here? There you are. Four bits. Uh, hey, keep the change. Thanks. I say Tom came here about five years ago. It was him that prospected the rainbow. He worked it all by himself at first, and he started hiring men. Now, it's one of the biggest mines in the West. Everybody in Tamarack gets their living from it in some way. And that's why everybody takes orders from town. That's one of the reasons, but it isn't the only one. What are the others? We just like the way he runs things, that's all. There's never any trouble here. The boys all make good money, and most of them are married and settle down. 
Well, it's unusual for a mining camp. Hamburg isn't just a camp anymore. It's one of the nicest towns in the whole of the West. Think Tom would have brought his little girl out here if it weren't? Oh, he's got a little girl. Just ten years old. Blue eyes and curly hair that's got more gold in it than her paw's mine. <laughs> Name's Mary Ann after her ma. I guess if his wife hadn't died, Tom wouldn't have come out west. He don't ever talk about it, but it must have hit him pretty hard. I noticed a big house up on the mountain near the mine. Is that where he lives? Yeah. Just him and the little girl? Nope, there's a sister, Aggie. She's a spinster lady, mighty set in her ways. If Tom runs the town, then Aggie runs Tom. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> Nothing. That little blue-eyed Mary Ann runs them both. <laughs> well, I think I'll go up and have a talk with Mr. Conlon. Do you figure there's any chance of my getting a job? If you know your business. I know my business. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> Ginger. Mary Ann. Oh, gosh. Young lady, do you realize it's after dark? Where have you been and what have you been doing? I'll tell you all about it in just a minute, Auntie. But now I've got to unsaddle Ginger. You just leave him for Sam. You're coming right inside the house with me. Come along. Yes, ma'am. Well, I'm waiting. I rode up the mountain a little into the woods. Well, that isn't against the rules. Pa said I could. That isn't all he said. Well, I didn't know it was getting so late. All of a sudden, the sun had gone down and it was dark. Hmm. There's nothing strange about that. Inside. Yes, ma'am. I ought to spank you. Yes, ma'am. I would, too, if supper went on the table. Where's Pa? He's in his office. Is he waiting for me? No, there's a gentleman with him. As a matter of fact, I didn't tell him you weren't here. Oh, thank you, Auntie. You're the sweetest aunt in the whole world. No, no such thing. Uh, you set down each of it's. Isn't Paul coming to supper? He'll be out as soon as he's finished with his business. What were you doing up there, child? I I can't tell you. You what? It's a secret, and I promised. Well, now, I think maybe we'll forget all about supper and... Oh, please. You wouldn't want me to break a promise, would you? Who were you talking to? I didn't say I was talking to anybody. But you must have been, Mary Ann. Now, don't make me lose my patience. I want to know who was up there with you. It was a lady. She was the beautifulest lady I ever saw. She was the beautifuler than the fairy princess in my book. And she gave me a secret message. Fairy princess. Secret message. <laughs> Stuff and nonsense. Mary Ann, when you make up stories like that, it's just the same as telling a fib. But I'm not making it up. Well, she looked just as real as you do. <laughs> you were dreaming. Well, I don't think so. Uh, you must tell me the truth. Did you fall asleep at all? Oh, yes, Auntie. That's why I was so late. Pine needles look so soft. And they smell so good. I was just going to lie down for a minute, but I didn't see her when I was asleep. She rode up on a beautiful black horse with a white star on his forehead. I was awake. Hmm. You drink your milk and forget about it. It was a dream. All right. <laughs> Land sakes, I guess I can't blame you for imagining things. I used to do the same thing myself when I was your age. Only you shouldn't. Well, I guess I oh, here's your right paw, here. Mr. Crawford, now. Well, let's hope they've left some food for us. Oh, there's a plenty, Tom. <laughs> Sit down, Mr. Crawford. Rance, this is my daughter, Mary Ann. Well, howdy. I've heard a lot about you, young lady. Have you? Oh, but you're twice as pretty as they said you were. What's your name? Rance. Rance Crawford. Oh. Well, what's the matter? Don't you like me? Of course she does. It isn't often she sees a stranger around here, though. She's a little shy. Uh, Aggie... Rance is going to work for me. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. He's going to help me in the office. Oh, well, that's fine. Paperwork always gives Tom a headache, Mr. Crawford. Would you mind making that uh, Rance, Miss Conlon? Oh, not a bit. Pass the biscuits to Rance, Mary Ann. I won't. Child. I won't. I won't do it. I won't. I won't. I won't. What on earth? Oh, it's all right, Tom. The child's nervous. She had a bad dream this afternoon. I'll go up to a room with her. That was the front door, Aggie. Good heavens. What's got into the child? Oh, now, don't worry. Mary Ann! That's her pony, all saddled. She's mounting. Mary Ann! I'm going after her. Hurry, Tom, hurry. Steady. You're right, Tonto. You can see both the town and the mine from this ridge. Ah. Doesn't look as if anything's wrong. Tonto not see anything. That girl wouldn't have come here if there weren't going to be trouble. That right. We'll make our camp back in the trees, and then we'll... 
Someone riding this way, Tonto. Ah, their trail over that way. We'll see who it is. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Yeah, this is far enough. They'll keep back in the trees. Ah, their horse come now. It's a little girl, Tonto. Ah. Going to. Uh, her get down from Pony. We don't want to frighten her. I think we better stay here. Little girl, walk this way. Lead Pony. Yes. Lady! She'll see us in a moment. We'll startle her even more if we try to get away. Oh! It's all right. We won't hurt you. Please don't be afraid. Oh, I'm not afraid. I know who you are. The lady told me all about your horse and your mask and Tano and everything. You're the Lone Ranger. What lady are you talking about? Well, she was here this afternoon. She rode through the trees from over there. The ridge we came from, Tonto. Oh, she was beautiful. But Andy says it was a dream, and I came back here to find out. Do you think it was a dream? No, I don't. She knew my name. She called me Mary Ann. And she knew my pa was Tom Conlon. Your father owns a rainbow mine? Uh-huh. Uh, what else did the lady say? Well, she said it was too late for me to be up here by myself, and I must go straight home. Was that all? Oh, no. She said that Pa mustn't trust a man named Rance Crawford. But when I got home, he was trusting him. He gave him a job, and he had supper with us. Rance Crawford is at your house now? Mm-hmm. I wouldn't pass on the biscuits. <laughs> well, uh, did the lady say why Rance wasn't to be trusted? No, but she said you'd be here before long, and you wouldn't let him hurt us. Is that all, Marianne? There was something about Horseshoe Valley. I forget. Kimosabe? Uh, how to know where Valley is. Wait. That was my secret message for Pa. He's to go there and look, but he mustn't let anybody see him. Why not? Well, isn't there any more, Marianne? Well, he's got to be careful. We'll do it for him. We'll go to Horseshoe Valley. But you'd better give your father the message about Rance Crawford. All right. Make sure you do it when you're alone. Tell him to watch Crawford closely. Like a hawk. Yes. But he mustn't say anything until Tonto and I come back. I hope I remember. Now, let's see if you do now. He mustn't trust Rance Crawford. He's got to watch him like a hawk, and he mustn't say anything until you and Tonto come back. That's right. Will he believe me, Masked Man? Won't he say it was all a dream like Andy did? Here. You can give him this. Oh, it, it's silver. Uh -huh. that, that silver bullet. Oh, it's pretty. You give it to your father, and he'll believe you. Someone coming up the trail. It's Pa, I bet. Ah, uh, one man. Can you tell from here who it is, Marianne? Uh-huh, it's Pa. Then tell him everything before you forget. Tonto and I are going along. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Hurry back. I'm Silver. Hurry. The trail to Horseshoe Valley led the Lone Ranger and Tonto higher into the mountains. But after an hour of climbing, it leveled off, and the great horse, Silver, and Scout increased their speed. It's not long now. Trail stuck down. The girl warned Conlon to be careful. She may have been afraid of an ambush. Uh, Tonto, keep watch. I wonder what we'll find. Around this turn, you see Valley. Rain up, Tonto. Steady, oh, Silver. Steady. Oh, fella. Oh. Look at those campfires. Oh, plenty of men down there. Hundreds of them. That's almost an army. Ah. They aren't Indians. No. They aren't soldiers either. They aren't wearing uniforms. What do you think, Kimosabe? What can I think? It's an outlaw army. An army of the Black Arrow. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. It was three hours after Tom Conlon had returned home with his daughter that he heard two horses stop out in front. His sister was on her feet as quickly as Tom was. There they are, Aggie. He kept his promise. Just like he always does. But what can it mean? A masked man is an engine. You're Tom Conlon, aren't you? Yeah, and you're the Lone Ranger. Mary Ann told me. This is my sister. Good evening. How do? Come in, won't you? You're welcome, masked man, but we've been wondering what this is all about. Did Mary Ann tell you that Tom and I were going to Horseshoe Valley? Sure. Well, we're back. We have some bad news, Conlon. What is it? There's an army of outlaws camped there. An army of outlaws? What do you want me to do, masked man? Round up all the boys in town and go after them? Even if all your men were experts with a rifle, there wouldn't be enough of them. You didn't really mean that when you said an army. There are hundreds of them. Hundreds? Mm, that's right. But what are they there for? Is the town in danger? Are they going to attack us? Yes, Conlon. Land of Goshen. Tonto and I got as close as we could, and we managed to hear some of the men talking. Are they going to attack soon? We weren't able to find that out. Well, what are they after? If they were just going to break into my office here and take the gold, they wouldn't need hundreds of men. We believe they're out to take possession of the mine. Oh, that's impossible. I wish you were right. But they couldn't get away with it. Not for long. And what good would the mine do them? My boys wouldn't work for outlaws. They couldn't get any gold out. They're bringing their own men to work the mine. What about Fort Cameron? The soldiers aren't so far away. If this town were wiped out, the soldiers wouldn't hear about it for a long time. And then when they did come here, they'd find a fort instead of a town. The outlaws would build one? They wouldn't have the nerve. You don't know what you're up against, and I can't tell you. But at least we have a warning from the girl. We can try and get the soldiers here in town. Tonto's riding onto the fort. You better get started at once, Kimosabe. Ah. Uh, scout traveled plenty fast. He won't get to Cameron before morning, no matter how fast he travels. He may not have to go all the way. That's what I'm counting on. What? The girl left here at sunset. She knew then everything we know now. Where else would she go but the fort? The soldiers may be on their way. Well, if they are, what's the sense of the engine going to meet them? There's a shortcut through the pass. He can show it to them. And if the attack holds off until dawn, we'll have a chance. And if it doesn't? We have plenty of work tonight, no matter what happens. Well, I'm with you. Where do we start? With Rance Crawford. We're taking the girl's word. He's one of the outlaws. There may be others in town. Find Rance and we'll find them. Kino. Uh, when did he leave here? Well, it was before Tom came back with Mary Ann. He finished his supper and then he said he might uh, ride down into town, find a place to board. I told him the Murphys might take him in, or maybe the Chalmers, that both have lots of room. We can be pretty sure he isn't at either one of those places. Now, you can look in at the cafe first, Tom. Aren't you coming with me? Not in there. Don't forget I'm wearing a mask. Oh, yeah, that's right. I don't believe he'll be at the cafe. Before you leave here, I want you to make a list of the men who started to work at the mine during the past month. Now, come on, into my office. We'll try their cabins one by one. It shouldn't take us long to find Rance. Quiet down, boys. Is everybody here, Vic? Yeah, Rance. Where are your rifles? I got them cached outside of town. Good. You can pick them up on your way to the mine. What are we going there for? You're going to take it over tonight. Are there any guards? One or two. Be careful. Knock them out. Don't use your guns. Yeah, but why the mine? Why can't we leave that till Bart gets here? Because it's the one place they can defend around here. It's got big rocks to protect it from anyone coming down the mountain. And if Mac hits the plain north of here and circles around to attack the town from the east, the mine's on higher ground, don't you see? Yeah. We gotta take it over tonight. Tom Conlon's place isn't far away. Just make sure those guards don't make any noise and you won't have any trouble. Up with your hands, all of you. Hey, a masked man, Tom Conlon. That isn't all. The sheriff's here in 20 men. What's the idea? You can take him prisoner, Sheriff, the whole lot of them. Put him in jail where they won't make any trouble. You can't arrest us. We haven't done anything. You ain't going to either. Well, now listen, I'm an engineer. I just got here today and I just met these boys. We're going to have a little card game. It won't do, Rance. Why, you haven't got anything against me. Too bad you forgot to close that window. We heard plenty. No. Now, listen, There's you... no time for that. Move them along, boys. They're heading for jail. Oh, oh, yeah, boy. Boy. Aggie. Yes, Tom. Did you find him? Him and his henchmen. They're in jail. Good. How many others were there? About a half a dozen. Where's the masked man now? Well, he's got all the rifles in town, and he's given them out to the men who can use them best. He's got the others building earthworks in front of the mine. Earthworks? That's where you're going, Aggie. You and all the rest of the women folks. Into the mine. Get Marianne dressed right away. You figure it's going to be bad? Uh, you can judge as well as me. We'll be ready to give him the best fight we can, that's all. That'll be good enough with the masked man to lead us. Well, maybe. Hurry up with Marianne. <laughs> The women and the few children in the town took their places inside the mine. The men toiled away at the earthworks, and when the first fringe of gray rimmed the sky to the east, the rainbow had become a fort. 
The Lone Ranger and Tom Conlon stood on the rocks above the mine and watched both the mountain and the plain below. Uh, what do you think, Masked Man? Which way will it come? We'll have to wait and see. You think it'd be down the mountain. That'd give them the advantage of the higher ground. Yes, but if they take the north draw down to the plain and circle through the town, they'll have the sun behind them. Uh, we'll get them whichever way it is. Do you remember one of those crooks mentioning a name? He said, uh, when Bart gets here... That'd be Black Bart. You know him? Well, he's the worst cutthroat this part of the country ever knew. Well, if only they'd said when it was going to be, Masked Man. It's getting lighter. No sign of the soldiers. Wait. Not there beyond the town, that long black column. Not that... No, not the army. It's coming from the wrong direction. Too much to the north. Come on, we got back to the men. Quiet, boys. The masked man wants to tell you something. Well, there isn't much to say, but there's something you should know. Those men riding into town are worse than outlaws. They're enemies of our country. Well, we're raising the flag, and you're fighting under it. Look at her, boys. Old glory. Hey! One thing more. There can be no surrender because we can expect no mercy. I want you to remember a little band of men 40 years ago who fought as you must fight for their wives and children, for their homes, for freedom. We're all Americans. Our fathers were heroes. And now we have a chance to prove ourselves worthy of our heritage. The Rainbow or the Alamo, there's no difference. We're fighting for freedom. They've reached the town. Your postman. The column of outlaws raced into the town. Some of them carried torches, and the buildings that lined the main street burst into flames. It was not long before they realized not a man, woman, or child were left in Tamarick, and the sight of the earthworks and the slope of the mountain showed them where the townspeople had chosen to make their stand. Black Bart rallied the men to his charge. the mine waited quietly, their guns ready, their faces grim with determination. On the outlaw column swept, and then a command from the Lone Ranger. Open fire! The first charge was broken, but a second followed almost at once, and then a third. The outlaws paid for each attack, but so did the defenders. At first, there were more men than rifles. And when one of them fell, another would grab the rifle from his nerveless hands. Then came a time when the rifles way with the men who had held them. Another charge. The outlaws attacked on three sides, and the Lone Ranger rallied the men at the weakest point. Drive them back, boys. Drive them back. Remember what you're fighting for. Black Bart turned aside. His men followed him. Once more, the fort had been held, and then... That's enough, men. Cease fire. You're a wounded mask, man. There's nothing. We'll have a few minutes now. You can take some of these boys into the mine and have their wounds dressed. It's all right, soldier. We'll get you fixed up. Jerry, give me a hand with Bill. Yeah. How much How much longer can we hold out, mass man? As long as we have to. Yeah. There isn't many of us left to fight. Don't try to talk. Just promise something. Keep the flag flying. It's a promise, soldier. You can put him right down here, mass man. <sighs> Howdy, Miss Conlon. Howdy. Now you keep quiet. This is no time for conversation. Mask Matt, please, won't you let me bandage your arm? It's only a scratch, Mary Ann. I have to get back outside. Please. All right. Tom! Yeah? Call me if they start back. Well, it's more than a scratch. I'm not wrapping it too tight, am I? No, that's fine. But hold it there. Mask Man! I'm coming. Oh, dear, again. There. Thank you, Mary Ann. They haven't started yet. But it looks like they're getting ready. There's Bart by the big tree. Good news, Tom. Good news? Look, beyond the town. More men. They got reinforcements. Those aren't outlaws. Look in front. You can see the colors. The flag. <laughs> Get your horses, men. What's that? Bart and his men will turn to meet the soldiers. There aren't many of us here, but if we charge at the right minute, we'll catch them between two fires and call off their retreat. Are you with me? <laughs> and come on! Mountain boys, faster, silver, faster. Tonto rode beside the colonel, and as the troops flashed into town from the east, the Lone Ranger and the men from the Rainbow headed down the mountain. 
Now the odds were even. And the masked man's sudden charge gave the advantage of position to the soldiers and the miners. The outlaws, suddenly put on the defensive, tried to organize themselves. They fought on for half an hour. Then a bullet in the shoulder knocked Black Bart from his horse. Suddenly, the renegades lost heart. Unable to break through without any chance of escape, they threw down their guns and shouted their surrender. They're giving up! Cease fire! Close in now! Take them prisoners! The battle was over. The town would carry its scars for months. But the cause of justice, of freedom, had triumphed. That night, the Lone Ranger talked with the colonel. You're leaving now? Yes, colonel. Take care of that arm. Uh, hunter bandage, plenty good. I was proud of my men today, but I'm even prouder of the men who fought with you up at the mine. They're Americans, colonel. All I had to do was tell them they were fighting for their country. Now, you told them about the Black Arrow? No, they didn't need any explanations. Do you realize that nearly every one of our prisoners belonged to it? Yes, colonel. It's the greatest blow we've ever struck against them. The fact they can raise so many men only proves their strength. The fight's only beginning. We'll carry on, masked man. We'll wipe them out. Hip! Come on, Silver! Get him up, Scout! Get him up! Oh, Silver! Hi! just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>